Hey guys, welcome back to this week's video. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate you. You know, not many people know this about me, but I started my marketing career back in the day, 1998, 99, doing SEO. So let me tell you a quick story on how that transpired and why it's important today. So my wife and I were engaged and she forced me to go to this bridal sh show, bridal fair um, in Santa Clara Convention Center. And she was out running around with her girlfriends looking at dresses and all these other things. And I'm sitting there talking to a guy and, and he was a bridal gown designer. And I asked him, I had no idea, I was 21, 22 years old or younger. And I had no idea what a wedding gown cost. And I said, you know, how much do those cost? And he said, you know, 500 or 5,000. And I was kind of blown away. And I was like, so how many have you sold today? And he you know, was looking through his receipts and he sold like 12 or 13. So I was doing the math and I thought to myself, okay, so on average, he's, you know, $2,500, $3,000, you know, for, you know, a dress, um, there might be an opportunity here. So what I started doing, and there was a lot of stuff in between this, uh, but I was started building websites for brides. And that did not last very long because sometimes brides are a little crazy and I was only making like 50 cents or a dollar an hour just based on, you know, all the changes that they wanted to these galleries, etc. This was before like the Knot and the Wedding Channel had their, you know, template websites. Then I started to transition into um, working with wedding vendors and doing consulting for bridal consultants, photographers, um, you know, videographers, you name it. Any, any person who works to support a wedding, I was working with them and I was doing their SEO. So I worked with you know, bridal consultants in, in Texas, in California, New York, and I would optimize their web pages for, uh, for Google you know, so that they would show up when somebody types in you know, uh, San Antonio photographer or San Antonio consultant or San Antonio wedding. You know, they would show up on the first page of Google. So that's what I was doing for a long time until I even got into you know, corporate America. So I understand the value of SEO and why it's important. But back then it was funny because you can like flood the metadata um, and rank number one in Yahoo and, and Bing and, and ask.com. You can also put like white text on white background and do the same thing. And then eventually, you know, the, the internet companies got smarter and you couldn't do that anymore. So when you think about SEO, there were kind of two main concepts. And, you know, I'm not an SEO consultant anymore, but I'm always thinking about, you know, the, the, the full picture, you know, a 360 degree view of the channels that my clients have and, and you know, whether it's paid, earned, shared and owned and SEO and, and natural search is a very key component to that. And if you're not familiar with SEO, there's kind of two ways to think about it. There's what's called on-page optimization and off-page optimization. On-page optimization is basically everything that you have control over and can publish on your own. So think of your website, your mobile site, your microsite, all of your owned content. You have 100% control to write the content on those websites and write the metadata, do all the internal linking, etc. Now, off-page optimization is all about inbound links. Now, we can do a whole video and there's already billions of people who are already talking about link building and, and relevant links, etc. So you have less control, but there's ways around that. So why is that important today? There, well, there's a lot of reasons why it's important. A, you want to make sure that when a buyer is looking for your software or your product and they Google it, not necessarily from a brand standpoint, but they Google data center security software, that your company, that your white paper, that your blog post, that your spec page um, shows up in the search results. And so uh, I want to talk today about how you use audience intelligence and or audience data to ensure maximum visibility um, in Google for owned content. So before we jump into the data, I think we should just quickly level set on um, language and search behavior. I'm a firm believer that we search the way that we talk. So me personally, I'm pretty sophisticated in how I use Google. I use Boolean queries when I, when I want to find the most relevant information. But oftentimes I will you know, use three, four or five word uh, phrases in order to do the same thing. And I believe developers are sophisticated as well and they are doing the same thing. Right, they're having these conversations online. They're trying to solve problems. They're, you know, they're they're debating. They're talking about all these, you know, technologies and, uh, you know, whatever they may be. And they're also googling it. You know, it, you know, it might be a different context. It might be a different day. But that is the kind of the preface as to why I'm doing this video, which is if you can start to understand what audiences are saying, and then use that data to inform how you write your content, whether it's a blog post or even social content, then over time your content will appear in Google. Okay, so let's go through this data real quick and then I'll kind of talk through it as we go. So we did this, this uh, cluster analysis on the developer community. We found nine clustered audiences and you know most brands will say, look, I wanna reach developers, I have a platform and it doesn't matter what, you know, what language they use or what type of developer they are, we are relevant to all of them. That's great and you know, mo 
companies that are doing this are, are, are doing well, right? They're probably doing better than their competitors, the ones who aren't doing uh, studies like this. But more importantly, I think each of these developers, um, um, subset developers, um, have different insights, have different likes, different characteristics, and talk about different things. So it's important to analyze the, the communities and the audiences at the segment level versus the larger audience level. So here's an example of the DevOps community and or developer engineers. There is a roughly 18 or 19,000 DevOps engineers in this panel. And what we're looking at is a conversational analysis. And much like I've done a lot of these before, it's basically an analysis that clusters conversations based on volume. So these are the topics, Docker, Jenkins, open source, Azure, Kubernetes. These are all the topics that are top of mind for developers that the, and, and they're talking about these things right now, right? They are, they're talking about it, they're conversing, they're debating. And so, you know, these two topics, Kubernetes and Azure are, you know, account for about 50% of the conversation. Now that's great. I mean, that those are one, that's like one topic, if you will. But if you look at some of the other, you know, outer layer here, these are subtopics. So CNCF, I'm, I'm not sure what that acronym is, st stands for, but cluster, layer, DevOps, containers, AWS, Linux. These are all topics within the context of Kubernetes that developers working in DevOps are talking about. So when you use a platform like a Brandwatch or others to, to build these um, cluster analyses, and when you export the data, you sometimes get thousands and thousands of rows of, of keywords, right? That then you can start to use and incorporate into your blogs, into your headlines, into your your social content, into your executive thought leadership. And so when you do that, you have to be patient though, because it's not like you're going to you know monitor these these audiences and then create a blog post you know on Monday and then on Wednesday you you're in Google you know on the first page. It takes time, right? And there's as I said at the very beginning of this call, there's the on page and off page, right? So if you can get um, in front of the developer community and maybe they're you know they're blogging and they're linking to your content and you're kind of building that conversation through through anchor text, then all of a sudden you will rank um, for that term uh, long term in Google. So this is not something that again is gonna you're not gonna see the results or the fruit of your labor right away. Now, what, because again, it takes time for Google to index content and it probably takes time for you to write the content, right? So I know in some cases in larger companies, it can take two, three, four, five weeks to write a, you know, a 500 or a thousand word blog post. Um, so for the more agile companies who can create content quickly, you have the advantage. Now, the way that this can show immediate results is through real-time listening. And real-time listening is, again, building an audience, whether that audience is is you know developers uh, devops developers or the larger developer ecosystem or the top 50 developers who are important that you're you want to engage with um, being able to monitor them in real time and then create content in real time in order to drive relevancy that is where you can see immediate results from your um, your efforts uh, within content marketing and overall you know content publishing um, on social media but before we go, I want to talk about one other way that I typically do or use to um, not just discover keywords, but also help kind of layer on top of audience data. I wouldn't do this instead of, you know, an audience analysis. I would do this in addition to an audience analysis, but this is BuzzSumo and it is a, a platform that is, you know, relatively in inexpensive and it was acquired by Brandwatch, I want to say two or three years ago, and they're innovating. They are providing, you know, new, new tools, new ways to do things, integrating with, you know, certain APIs. Uh, for for you know users to get good data, and this keyword uh, search is is pretty awesome. Let me just quickly search for Kubernetes and, and let's just see what we get um, in the results. Now, right now, I'm looking at related keywords, and I can see search volume as an aggregate. I can see it by keyword, so I can start to see volume of searches. Now, what this data represents is everyone in Google searching for these terms, right? It's not just developers. Now it could be mostly developers, but maybe they're students or, you know, head of IT, people who you may not necessarily be selling to, but you can start to get an understanding of the types of, of words that people are searching for um, within Google and how often they're doing so. So I'm clicking on similar keywords and you'll see again, more definitions, right? And, and words that encompass Kubernetes. Um, so you can start to think about ways and there's 263 pages here, right? So you can export all this and this could be part of your editorial calendar, right? If you layer this on top of your audience data, um, you can get some pretty interesting insights. Now looking over here, this is for a paid search. So again, if you're launching a paid search campaign, you can get this, this tool. Um, but right here is pretty interesting because this tells you the demand of the media. Right, so we're looking at the demand of search, search demand over here to the left, and also search uh, demand, uh, demand of the media in terms of what they're publishing. 
So you can start to you know compare things and and look over time how often the media is uh, you know writing articles about DevOps or Kubernetes or De Docker or what have you, and that is a, a great insight to start to understand the, the shifting in behavior and the shifting in how people are searching for topics and why. You're going to get the why though from the audience data, not from here. So I hope these examples are helpful to you. You know, oftentimes I try to oversimplify it um, just to make a point and get this video done. But the reality is the majority of your time in any analysis, whether it's audience, influencer, or media analysis, or intelligence, the majority of your time is going to be spent um, mining it yourself or having an analyst, what we call human analysis, um, overlay the data. Because you can't just go to a platform, you know, plug in a keyword or a Boolean query export the data and call it a day and launch a campaign, right? There, there's a significant amount of time. In fact, the majority of your time is going to be spent looking at the data. Now, if you work at an agency like I do, I, I love it because the more analysis that I do and the more understanding of the marketplace and ecosystem, the better I am communicating with my clients, right? Oftentimes I know the industry better than they do because I spend so much time understanding what certain audiences are saying about a topic or a product or a platform or a brand, understanding how they search, understanding how they interact, what channels they use, understanding what they're, they're saying about their competitors. That type of data is, is valuable for me because I go in and kind of look like a rock star to my clients when I'm presenting it. So I hope it was helpful. And uh, again, this is something that I'm very passionate about, but I'm not always 100% correct. So if you don't agree with me or you don't agree with what I say, or you want to challenge what I say, let's hop on a phone let, or we, let's do a video and let's, let's hash it out. Let's talk about it. I want to learn and I hope that you're willing to learn from me. And that, my friends, concludes our time together. Thank you so much again for spending this time with me. Uh, please be safe. Please stay healthy. And until I see you next time, have a great day. Bye.